YouTube. Hey, what's up YouTube? Down to fix it, man. Got another quick video here for you. I'm gonna show you how to change your front brake pads and your front brake rotor on a 2014 Toyota Prius. This is similar to the other video I did on just replacing the brake pads on a 2013 Prius, but in this case, we're gonna also change out the rotors. These rotors are starting to wobble a little bit and the pedal's starting to pulsate when you brake at high speed. Rather than have them resurfaced or machined, we're just gonna put new ones on. Now, the first thing I like to do is push this caliper piston back inside the caliper, which makes room for the new thicker pad material and the new rotors, which will be a, a little bit thicker as well. But before we do that, it's important that you pop the hood and take a look at the master cylinder to make sure that you have enough room to do that. So let's go take a look. Okay, so this is our brake master cylinder right here. And you can see that we are well below the max line. We're actually closer to the minimum. So we'll be able to push the caliper piston back in, which will push the brake fluid level up a little bit. And uh, it looks like, you know, just no one has been topping this off as the brakes have worn down. And that's pretty normal. I see that a lot. If this had been topped off or this was closer to the max, you could always remove this cap and suck some of the old brake fluid out. A lot of people ask me if you need to remove this cap before pushing the caliper piston back in, and you really don't. Any of the air that's in here can easily escape through this lid. It doesn't really cause any additional resistance. But looks like we've got plenty of room, so we can push the caliper piston back in. Okay, so now that we know we have enough room in the master cylinder, we're gonna put a screwdriver in here. I've got it wedged between the rear pad and the rotor itself. And then just kind of wiggle that a little bit to get it started. And then I'm just pulling that towards me, which you can see that that's, that's prying that caliper piston back in. Now, sometimes this method doesn't allow you to push the caliper piston all the way back in, and you still may need to use a C-clamp or a caliper compression tool, but this seems to be the quickest way, and it's the way I usually use. And a lot of times you can get it far enough in. All right, and that feels like we've got it e either all the way back or most of the way back. I will say that these slide pins feel very stiff and the ones on the other side were very stiff as well. So we'll, we'll definitely get those cleaned and re-greased. That took me a little bit of extra force because these, these slide pins are just really stiff. You see, I can barely, I can barely move that caliper piston back. Usually that just slides really freely. But you can see though that we've got a lot more room now for the new thicker pads. All right, now we can loosen and remove the top and bottom slide pin bolts. And those are a 14 millimeter. You can see that the slide pin wants to spin here and that's okay. You can just grab a 17 millimeter open end wrench on there and just hold that steady while we break that loose. And I'm just gonna spin these off really quick. That's what those look like, set those aside. All right, and then we can take off the caliper and I've just got these hooks comes in handy, you can just put it in there and then I'm just gonna hook this on up on top of the coil spring so that's out of the way. And you can see that our caliper did get pushed all the way back in. We got some little critter in there or something. All right, now we can take out the old brake pads. And you can see these ones were completely worn down, really not much left, but this little metal tab right here was starting to rub on the rotor where you can see where it's kind of shiny. That's nothing, nothing bad. That's just me prying those off. But this right here is a indicator that it was time to get those changed. Now, I always like to note the orientation of the, the little squealer here before I take it off. That is in the top on both sides. Okay, now we can loosen and remove the two bolts that hold this caliper bracket in place. We need to take those off so we can take off the rotor. These are our 17 millimeter head, but I'm using a breaker bar because these are on there pretty solid. And I'm just gonna keep one hand on this bracket while we zip these out. Let's hang on to those. You take that bracket off. Sometimes these rotors will just come right off after you do that, but this looks like it's got a little bit of rust going on, a little bit of corrosion, and a lot of times these will get stuck to the hub. The rotor itself is threaded right here where you can grab a couple bolts, the same thread, and put it in there and it almost acts as a puller and that will push on the face of the hub and pop this off. And that works just fine. Or you could use the Rotor Remover 9000. Just a few hits with the uh, Tanya Harding will take that right off. Now before I put the new rotor on here, I'm just gonna clean all this rust off. I'm just gonna use this little wire brush or wire wheel on my drill. Just remember to use some safety glasses here.
these are the rotors we're going to use it's it's a bosch quiet cast see how nice that looks this is this is coated so we don't have to clean anything off now usually we'll replace these clips here too the the new brake pad kit that we got did not come with these new clips what they call these abutment clips so i'm just going to pop them out and get them all cleaned up we're also going to clean this bracket inside this little channel just to make sure that 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 sits flush in there but we'll just pop these all out real quick Most kits do come with new clips nowadays. This one just didn't come with them. Now, before I put those clips back in, I'm just gonna put just a little dab of this sill glide, this little brake grease underneath where each of these clips go. The idea behind that is just to prevent corrosion or buildup underneath there. It's a really small or a very thin layer. Most diagrams I've seen that talk about where to grease brake pads, they do show just basically all the contact points, the metal contact points of the pad, the non-friction area, of course. And then that one. All right, real quick guys. So I was going through the footage on this to do the editing and everything was done and i realized that i had actually flipped these around so i'm just going to take it off and put these in the right place wasn't making any noise or there wasn't any issues it's just that i noticed that in the footage and so i figured i better just swap those back where they're supposed to go and it's easy enough to do so that's how it goes this spring part right here the flexible spring part goes on the inside so don't get those mixed up like i did in the rest of the footage you're going to see these are flipped out here but i just i caught that and so i'm changing this real quick okay now we're also going to remove and re-grease these slide pins these were very stiff i could tell when i was pushing the caliper piston back in and see they're very difficult to pull out same thing happened to me on the other side so we'll just get these all cleaned up there's one that has a rubber boot or a rubber ring here down in the end and then one does not since this was pretty stuck in there i'm going to use this this rolled up little paper towel in here just to kind of get out all of that old grease you can feel that that's that grease is just kind of a it's almost kind of dried so here we're going to use that same sill glide i'm just using a little dab here on the back of my glove and just kind of smash that around this clean slide pin here and then put that right back in now you will need to burp out that air just by pulling back on that but that already feels so much better that's a huge improvement over how it was same with this other slide pin here just yeah that one's definitely gunked up too but we got to pull those out get it all clean now you may have seen on some videos i'll just put the pin right back in there and just try to use that to extract some of the excess material in this case because it was pretty bound up i'm just using this paper towel to try to get in there and clean whatever was in there the old dry grease if you use the wrong kind of grease or regular petroleum based grease it will definitely make these slide pins stick they'll bind up and then your brakes will drag i'm sure this is the first brake job that this prius has had so i don't know if from the factory they're just not using a grease that can hold up to the heat it, sh it shouldn't be caked like that or sticky but that's how it feels there we go and again some new sill glide here you can use any kind of brake grease or silicone based grease and then we can put the clean slide pin back in there and again what a difference that makes that is already spinning very freely and just make sure that any air in there is burped out you don't want anything to cause these slide pins to pop back out because then it'll cause your outside pad to drag that feels perfect now these are ready to go all right and then we can put this bracket back in place Sometimes it helps to put one lug nut back on. I don't always do that, but sometimes that'll help hold the rotor straight while you can get everything else lined up. And we'll just snug these with the ratchet here real quick. All right, now the torque spec for the rear bolts here is 101 foot-pounds, and I'm just using this gear wrench 85062. Technically, it only goes up to 100. I just turned it one past. That seemed to work just fine for the other side. All right, now on our new pads, these clips don't come installed, but they do line up exactly the same as the old ones. They just clip right into the end. This one here, they just snap right in place. Now also on the back of the pad, just to cut down on some of the noise and vibration, I do use a little bit of Silglide there, just a very thin film. 
and then I do like just a, a little dab at each end where it slides inside this channel. That just seems to cut down on some of the noise and vibration that brakes will make. Same with the inside pad. I've already got a little bit of Sil Glide here on the glove. Just that thin coat and a little bit at the ends. There we go. Just make sure that you don't get any grease on the surface of the pad material or on the rotor. And if you do, just make sure you wipe that off. All right, and then we can take off this hook and put the caliper over the pads or the new pads here. And here you may have to just pull in on, a, on the slide pins a little bit to get that to line up. And then we can put these slide pin bolts back in. Now we'll just get those snug with this real quick. Now the torque spec on this slide pin bolt is just 25 foot pounds, but this slide pin may want to spin. So you may have to put this open end wrench back on there to hold it steady while we torque it to 25 foot pounds. And you're done. Now just remember before you drive off, it's very important that you step on the brake pedal a few times to push the caliper piston back out, pushing those pads up against the rotor where they need to be. Now when you do that, don't press the brake pedal all the way to the floor. That can damage the seals in the master cylinder. Just press it down about halfway several times until it feels firm. Now once you've done that, don't forget to double check the level of fluid in your master cylinder and just make sure you get everything torqued to spec. You can double check your manual on the torque specs on this. I hope you liked the video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't mind that does help me out. I'll get a link in the description to some of the parts and tools used in the video as well. Thanks so much for watching and good luck.